Here we go. All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Claire Malina. I'm the Youth Services Librarian here at the Blue Hill Public Library. And I'm very pleased to be here with our friends from Kneisel Hall today. Um, typically, we do um, a program in the spring, um, a collaboration of Kneisel Hall, Blue Hill together in music. And this year, we are doing it virtually. So um, we're here today with Clara Lyon and Hannah Collins. And um, thank you all so much for joining us. And I guess before I turn it over to those two, um, we have, we still have some postcards available for this program. And I actually designed the postcards. So I'm very pleased to <laughs> share these with you all. Um, and I'll just kind of hold these up. So if you would like some of these postcards, we have them at the library and we have extra and we would be happy to get some to you. Um, and you can write them to anyone in your life or if you don't know who to write to we have some suggestions of if you wanted to write to folks at the island nursing home or parker ridge or even um, the schools we have lots of um, ideas for folks who might enjoy just a hello and um, so we hope you'll be inspired by this music and write some postcards so i'll turn it over to clara and hannah Thank you, Claire. Thanks so much to both Hannah and Claire for, for hosting this event. Um, my name is Hannah Collins. I'm a cello player and uh, I've been involved with Kanaisa Hall for a long time since I was first a student in 2005. Um, as many of you know, and for those of you who are joining us via uh, video after this event, um, you know, Kanaisa Hall has been a, a chamber music uh, concert series and and school and sort of training program for over a hundred years in Blue Hill um, and currently is up on Unpleasant Street and there are a number of programs which are coming back this summer. Um, some of the in-person uh, training for young musicians is happening in person this summer after a, a summer of virtual programming and, and and other performances so that's exciting for Kanaisel and our branch of it um, is the Kneisel Hall Blue Hill Together in Music project, which Claire mentioned, which is to come not only in summertime, but, but visit um, musically visit different places in Blue Hill during the year. So we've been um, working for about five years to put on programs in the libraries and the schools and, and in other community venues throughout the, the year to bring people into Kneisel Hall and bring Kneisel Hall into the community. I'm going to pass it to Claire now to explain a little bit about what we're doing today. Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Clara Lyon. I'm a violinist, and I've also been involved with Kneisel for many, many years. Um, I was last a student there in 2011, and we've been running this program um, for the last five years now, um, where we collaborate and interact with uh, the library and the schools and other organizations in Blue Hill um, in September and May. And this year, of course, all of that has changed. We've done a number of different things virtually, including some story time, uh, music videos uh, with Claire at the library. We have one up now of Ferdinand the Bull, so I encourage you to check that out as well. And today we're going to be sharing um, a little bit about, since uh, Hannah Collins and I are not able to be in the same place right now, we can't play music together, but we're going to be sharing a little bit about our personal musical lives and through music and one piece that we've recorded together. And we're going to be listening with the idea of letting the music be a creative um, leaping off point for our own imagination. So we'll kind of guide you through the program today. And um, of course, you're always welcome to take whatever you like from this music. And we hope that you um, find something that you enjoy in each piece, but We'll kind of have some listening prompts um, to suggest things you may want to listen for and what you might be able to do with them. So Hannah, I'm going to let you kick off the program here. Yeah, we're going to jump in with a piece by the composer Chen Yi. Chen Yi is a Chinese composer who was born in Guangzhou, China, and then moved to the United States um, to study at Columbia and, and train. Um, she was the first woman to get a master's in music composition from the Beijing Conservatory, Central Conservatory, 
and then um, got a doctorate at, at Columbia in New York City and has been living in the United States for decades and composing beautiful music, um, which kind of joins together all of her experiences. So the piece I'm going to share first is called The Romance of Xiao and Qin. And it's about not a romantic love story between people, but about two instruments that are really compatible together. So the xiao is a, a vertical flute, kind of like a recorder. Um, and the qin is um, like a zither type of instrument that's held horizontally like a, a guitar, plucked like a guitar. And so the piece is, is written for Western instruments. Um, in this case, the cello and the piano but it's kind of celebrating just that compatibility between the instruments and how much fun it is to play together. So I thought about playing this, um, this recording, which I just made earlier this month with my mother, who is a pianist. And I was inspired by um, one of Claire's images, um, Claire Malina, who made these images. Could you show us, Claire, the one that's of the stove and the chair? Um, yeah, I love this scene with the rug and the stove. It, it just made me think about being at home. And we've all been at home a lot this year, I think, finding ways to enjoy um, either playing games or, you know, reading or spending time with uh, family or, or loved ones. Um, and so for me, that most uh, early memory for me about fun things to do at home, since I'm fortunate my mother is a pianist, is playing music at home. So. My mother and I made this video of Chen Yi's piece, The Romance of Xiao and Qin. And as we listen to it, um, I'd love for you to take a moment to jot a postcard to someone who you've enjoyed spending time, you know, nestled up at home with or watching a movie, playing a game, or perhaps just jotting down um, a memory of, of that type of scene that you have had. So here's, here's Chen Yi's piece, the, the Romance of Xiao and Qin. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's my thanks to my mom for <laughs> sharing that that video with me. Uh, we should mention we'll definitely um, have time to answer some some questions at the end. So maybe if you have any questions for us, keep them in mind and we'll we'll get to them. But I'll pass it to Claire now who will introduce the, the next piece. Sure. Um, so one piece that I wanted to share today um, speaks to the main part of my musical life these days, I play in a professional string quartet based in Chicago, which is where I am right now. So I'm calling in from Chicago. And um, we've been a group for about 10 years. Um, I've been with the group for six and a half years now. And we've been lucky to go on some incredible musical adventures. We work with a lot of different collaborators and you'll hear a piece that we've uh, played with a collaborator a little later in today's program. And um, we've also been very fortunate to have been nominated for some Grammy Awards for our albums. Um, so you can check those out. We are called Spectral Quartet. Um, this is a video that uh, we made a few years ago of a piece by Felix Mendelssohn. And if that's a new name to you, I'll just say a couple of words about Mendelssohn. He is a classical composer, and this particular piece was written basically about 200 years ago um, in the 1820s when he was only 20 years old. So he was kind of a very talented young upstart, um, I might say. And uh, this string quartet is his, his very first, um, so very first piece he wrote for this ensemble. And I love playing this particular movement. This is the second movement um because uh it i think it conjures feelings of almost kind of playing in a dream sequence like you are having uh, so beautiful memories of someone or some ones that you used to love to spend time with um and they're they're very happy memories so there's there's kind of like some nostalgia i think that you'll hear but also some really uh just beautiful um like warm glowy happy feelings in this music. Um, so I invite you to take a look at the um, postcard of Claire's that says, I love you to the moon and back. Claire's gonna hold this up in a minute. And if you are so moved as you're listening to the music, just recall um, someone that you might miss a lot right now, someone that you wish that you could see in person and, and give them a hug and write them a little note about it and just say, I can't wait to see you as soon as possible. All right, here we go. This is Mendelssohn's second movement from his very first string quartet, Opus 12.
Love that. Thank you. It's, I, it's such a special piece. It's like, I mean, I, I feel like the music is just like giving you a hug the whole time. <laughs> I love it. Totally. We should mention too that Mae Feinberg, the other violinist in the group, also was a student at Kanaisel and the whole group was up to visit um, and perform on the Kanaisel series. What was it? Two, two summers ago, three summers ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and Maeve actually um, grew up kind of splitting her uh, their time between New York and Castine. So Maeve's a kind of a main native. Good sailor. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to take us on a, a, a jump of 100 years forward now to 1915 or so. Um, so we're kind of leaping all over the place, but the, the next piece I'd love to share is part of the Debussy, Claude Debussy Cello Sonata, which is a, a French piece. Um, and Debussy made some notes as he was writing this piece um, that didn't end up published in the score, but you know, give us a hint. He titled the piece Pierrot Angry at the Moon. It's a reference to Pierrot Lunaire, the uh, Commedia dell'arte character or, you know, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Commedia dell'arte, like I imagine a sort of mime character or a, a sort of mischievous, maybe a kind of like a clown or, or some is as the main character of this piece. So uh, I'm going to share the first movement of the sonata, which kind of gives us the setting. And then you hear a little bit of, of, of the character coming in. Um, but the that attitude of the piece as, as sort of having um a lot of mischief hidden in it and a lot of action and the potential for a lot of um, different types of things to happen remind me of um, uh, being out in nature uh, on a hike or going camping when you sort of hear something scurrying off to the side of the path or maybe you're you know looking at the moon and you hear something rustling and you're not totally sure you know <laughs> who's out there or whether it's a, a, a possum or a creature of some kind um, that's that's up to up to something. So I thought of Claire of your postcard with the uh, landscape with the island on it. Yes. Um, to me, that reminds me of, you know, the land, the sea, the sky and sort of t being out in nature and, and being aware of how much is going on, whether it's the birds above the, the, the you know, the fish below or the the, uh, the critters scampering around the woods and what what kind of hijinks they could be up to. So this is the uh, this is the Debussy sonata for cello and, and piano. And maybe as as we listen to this, you could dash off a postcard to someone with whom you have a memory of either spending time in nature with or getting up to some hijinks with. I should say also that I'm playing with my friend Ellen Summer in this video.
Thank you. Actually, listening to it now, it, um, almost more makes me think about like the wave crashing into the rocks, you know, at Acadia or something. That kind of majestic um, momentum that comes from from seeing the the ocean collide with the land. What's next, Clara? Yeah, um, we're gonna change directions yet again. Um, one of our favorite things to do in Spectral Quartet is to commission new works. So we work with a lot of composers who write stuff, especially for us, um, which is a really special kind of way to collaborate. Um, you really get to know um, what's behind the music, so to speak, and where their inspiration comes from when you can actually talk to the person who wrote the music. So this is a piece by Anthony Chung. Anthony um, lived in Chicago for quite a while while he was writing this piece and actually just moved to Rhode Island. So he's now an East Coaster, but um, Anthony's always loved jazz music and as well as being a phenomenal classical player himself. Uh, he's a pianist. And so he was looking for a way to combine these two interests and he ended up writing a piece that kind of borrows a lot from jazz harmonies while kind of embracing the unique textures of the string quartet. Um, he also decided that he needed a flute in this piece um, because a flute has actually a great history of both being a really like jazz centric instrument as well as being um, you know well versed in the classical tradition. So here you're going to see us performing with a flutist named Claire Chase who is an extraordinary artist doing amazing things for uh, new music and new art, and she's currently teaching at Harvard. Um, this is just a short tune. I'd like to invite you to check out Claire's image of the lantern. I think that the music that you're going to hear is particularly mischievous, excuse me, mischievous. And when I look at this image and listen to the music, I think about times that I have been able to explore new places. So I'd like you to invite, I'd like to invite you to think about um, where you might want to go exploring next when it is, when everything's open and it's safe to travel again, where is a place you want to go exploring and who do you want to explore it with? Maybe write them a little note. So here we go, Anthony Chung's, uh, this is called The Real Book of Fake Tunes. And I'll just say one more thing about that. Um, this is kind of a, a funny title. Um, Anthony is referencing a, the real book, which is a, col a historic collection of jazz standards. Um, so anyway, here we go.
Yay. I love looking at um, Claire Malina's background and imagining whoop, those sounds coming out of the, out of the trees there. Maybe some birds or other other sounds behind her. Yeah, totally. I love that piece. It's so like joyful and atmospheric all at the same time. So well, we're, yeah, go ahead. We have one more piece of music to share, but we thought we would take a minute to just hear any thoughts from anyone or any questions or reactions or ideas that, that have come come to your mind while we've been listening to music together. And to give you a chance to uh, finish up some of those notes you've been writing. Well, I haven't had a chance to be writing while I'm listening, but I'm really enjoying listening anyway. Glad we want to make sure, make sure for anyone who's um, watching, you know, if you want to get your hands on some of Claire's beautiful postcards, you can get still get them through the library. Is that right, Hannah? Yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of copies left, so. And feel free to make your own as well. Yeah, I hope that if anyone feels inspired to decorate these cards even more, color them, use paint, make them your own. They're, they're just a basis um, for you to, to evolve from. So enjoy. <laughs> Great. Well, we wanted to make sure that you know that um, we are going to, uh, you can get in touch with us if you're watching this and you have any questions, you can definitely find us through the Blue Hill Public Library. And also coming up working with Claire, we'll have several more musical story times coming up in the month of May, as well as, as some other, other things planned for the future. So we will definitely be a uh, staying in touch and, and keep making bringing music to the library. We wanted to close today's program um, with a piece that Hannah and I enjoy playing together quite a bit. Um, so Hannah and I have been playing music together since 2014 when we first met. And um, this particular piece is a duo for violin and cello. Uh, we recorded it earlier this year when we were able to be in the same place, uh, we met up here in Chicago and it's called Josephine's Waltz. And um, it is by Roger Tolrot. Um, he is a Swedish fiddle player and uh, composer. And this piece he wrote for his niece for her christening. Um, we like to use it at the, usually at the beginning of a program to kind of help us like warm up a space and make it feel like it's, you know, happy place to be on stage. Um, but we're gonna close today's program with uh, this piece today and we hope you enjoy it. Hannah, anything else that you wanna add? No, just a thank you to, to Hannah and to Claire and everybody at, at Blue Hill Public Library for, for hosting this. And we're gonna be sharing these postcards and the, these tunes with other, uh, er, other people in the community this upcoming week as well. So hopefully there'll be a lot of uh, connections drawn with these postcards flying through flying through the mail system. Here comes the uh, Josephine's Waltz.
Thank you so much, everyone. It's been a joy to share uh, this music with you this morning. And we wish everyone all the best. Thank you again to Claire and Hannah at the library, to Hannah, my comrade, who's calling in from Kansas right now um, on the cello. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you in person when we can. And let's all go outside. <laughs> yes, absolutely.